It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party. It's the 202. It's the 202. Hello, everyone, and here's what's coming to you straight on the 202. Remember this name, Pax Musicana. It's a fresh and creative media concept that could shake up the way we consume content. Also, a soulful singer, Emmanuel Withers of Baltimore, brings a little of what he calls his neoclassic sound to Studio A. It's all happening right here on the 202. And welcome to the 202. I'm Furman Patterson, here with my lovely co-host. I call her my sunshine, Michelle Wright. Thank you, Furman. We're matching today. We certainly are. I, like I love that. it. You planned that, didn't you? <laughs> no, it was an accident. But listen, okay. it's no accident that our guest DJ is here, DJ Ducky Dynamo. <laughs> <laughs> You can call it the new face of media. A group of creative artists and entrepreneurs are using multiple media platforms to help inspire social activism. That is right. With Pax Musicana, co-founders Drew Wilson and Cindy Tran are producing media to drive participation in meaningful causes. Think music with a message. All right, so welcome to you both for being here. This is a fantastic to, to learn stuff. Michelle and I like to learn about new media. So first of all, Pax Musicana, tell us where the name comes from. Drew. Do you want to take that? No, Just go. No, well, yeah. uh, Pax Musicana, um, actually there's a JFK speech that he gave at American University, maybe in about 1963, he talked about what we don't want to do is have a Pax Americana, where America kind of rules the world by kind of their military power. Mm -hmm. And kind of what Pax Musicana, it's based on that concept, but it's Musicana, peace, Pax, the Latin for peace, peace music. Peace music. Oh, interesting. Oh, I like that. Yes. So you say you're creating, you know, kind of a different way to give us content. How exactly do you do that? Well, we're producing different shows ah. that are showcasing um, talented artists focused on venues and organizations that really bring a purpose behind certain social and economical issues. So before we talk about these issues, um, what, what kind of um, shows are you producing? In the digital space only? Are you doing? Currently in the digital space. Ah. So, yes. Oh, I mean, they're, they're, they're cross-platform they're cross concepts, you okay. know? I mean, I, I think eventually this is a nonprofit music media studio that we're doing. So there will eventually be television shows. We eventually want to do narrative. Mm. But right now, we want to start in digital space with some nonfiction kind of stuff. Um, just, you know, our bandwidth allows us to do that. It's a great way to get other people in the community involved. They can call to talk about their causes and the things that they care about and that's you know that's what we're all about. Well there's one thing called Musicana Logs. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna roll that but tell us about it right after we see this. Sure. Yeah. yeah. There aren't that many venues that really support female DJs. The only time you book a DJ is a female DJ in particular is when you're like hey can you get me a female DJ? Um, and in most cases, I usually pick up the gigs, but there are other female DJs that are really talented. Oh, so it's a little bit of video, a little bit of music, a little bit of storytelling, but you tell us. Well, we really focus on people, venues, organizations that have a purpose behind them that is doing something that brings something different to the table. So for instance, that episode is focused on a women's event that showcases mm. female DJs that collaborate and work together that really makes it really inclusive and diverse. Um, and that's what really Musicana Logs is really about. Ah, and some okay. of the platforms and some of the programs that we're building, we're asking people to come and engage with us. Music Kind of Logs is our way to kind of reach out and work with other people in the community because there are a lot of great organizations yes. out there doing a lot of great work. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure, you know, we get their shot on them too so we can kind of start building this larger community. You know, what's interesting, I, I notice a lot of the younger people, um, well, all of us, in fact, we are gravitating towards companies that have a give back component to their mission statement and their whole model. Definitely. You know, like, of course, the Toms, you know, you buy a pair, you give a pair. Yes. What, what ways do you think that you're giving back in addition to what you've already said? Well, I mean, we've spent all week talking about Nazis and Klansmen. You know, I have a crick in my neck because I've been shaking my head so much mm -hmm. this week. 
And, you know, one of the things that we want to do, for instance, we have a, a program called Woodstock Avenues. It follows around five activists who are rethinking and uh, reimagining the way demonstrations and protests are done. They want to enhance them sonically. They want to infuse them visually. And what and, and all of our things, we want to make sure there's a kind of a diverse mm. group of people, not only yeah. from economically, uh, ethnically, um, nationally, what, whatever have you. And I think that in of itself is just very important to just see these people from different places coming together to work on Absolutely. a single project with a single mind. Yes. And I would like to see that everywhere, all around the country. So I'd like for you both to elaborate on Conflict Cables for me. Sure. Um, Conflict Cables is a show that follows three music professionals uh, in, in D.C. and uh, follows their per professional and personal lives, but what brings them together is that they're working on a music video album called The Conflict Cables mm. that showcase different artists doing kind of pro-social or protest or activist songs. And um, Well, let, let's take a look at oh, it. Oh, so that'd be great. See. Yeah. yeah. 60 minutes, St. John's uptown, playing football, building stamina. Skip to Georgia Avenue, bagging chicks who went to Banneker. We immigrants from Africa, dwelling in the district. Pop was very disappointed when I said I want to spit it, but I did it. My face on a mural down on U Street. R.I.P. to Mary and Barry. I wept profusely. The story unfolds. Meditate with eyes closed. Hard to grow within the shadow of a gentrified soul. Call it Chocolate City. Now it's Milk Chocolate City. Used to rap with UCB at the ice box. Can you feel me? Summertime shots. Nobody budge when the guns blow. Rolling into yums. Order I was hosting open mics on 14th and W. The mayor shut us down. We just adapt to make another two. Tenth and you, true school, some behind my pedigree. Peace to those behind me and those coming ahead of me in R A R Double E S S E N C E. My political city. Now this all looks pretty impressive. Now I'm seeing the two of you, but how many people are involved with this endeavor? Right now, maybe eight to ten in yeah. various capacities. Obviously, we're very, very much hands-on. Um, we have a, a mm -hmm. third partner who's also very much hands-on, a guy I used to work with at MTV. And, um, Chris. you know, yeah, and we're just trying to, right now, we're in the, still in the development stage and mm. trying to talk to as many people as we're so grateful for you all having us on your show and everything like that. And hopefully this is a start. We can continue to build this coalition of the willing, I'm calling it. Yeah. Coalition oh, of I like the willing, yes. I like that. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I saw you say, that was you in the video, right? Called yes, Hard. That, was, that was with my artist, Born <laughs> I Music. He's a local DC artist. the first okay. installment yeah. of, like, the Conflict Cable. That was a clip from the first music video installment of Conflict Cables. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, it's so refreshing to see people doing new things, especially yeah. Yeah. young people uh, you. taking media to a whole different direction. Thanks to you both for coming on and sharing Thank it you. with us. Thank you. 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 All right. Awesome. Coming up, call it Neo Soul or Neo Classic. Our next guest says he's channeling the soulful style of yesterday's music legends. And it all comes together as a great voice with the smooth style singer songwriter Emmanuel Withers. He's up next. Don't you go away. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. <laughs> Welcome back to the 202. From backup vocals for DC's Raheem Devon to singing in a Temptations review, Emmanuel Withers has been steadily perfecting his own brand of R&B. The soulful singer says he's inspired by legends like Marvin Gaye, Sarah Vaughan, and Donny Hathaway, which is why he calls his style neo-classic. You're so smooth. You're so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, neo-classic. Head to toe. I love it. How are you? I'm wonderful. Great yes. to have you here. Yeah, thank you for having me on the show. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, you you do have that smooth sound. It's just <laughs> yeah. looking at the music video, I thought about, you know, I want to be cool like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, you have a long history, mm -hmm. and you and I, when we were mm -hmm. talking in the green mm -hmm. room, we discovered 
the beginnings of mm -hmm. Rahim's career when mm -hmm. he was with another band. Mm -hmm. You go back. Tell us a little bit about that in your. Well, that goes back uh, some years now. Well, for me, um, <laughs> a little bit. A little I was bit. working with uh, Urban Ave 31. Okay. Uh, the Urban Ave 31 movement. So it was like a, it was like a socially conscious uh, band. Uh, the movement, it was just, we were addressing different issues that was going on in, mm -hmm. uh, in the D.C. area, and just pretty much throughout uh, the country at large. So it was a very, like, uh, it was a project that I could get behind, and mm -hmm. I was really, you know, moved by the, um, the subject matter and the content. So I started out with him, um, myself, along with uh, Bilal Salam. Bilal, which is, yes. Yeah, he was singing with Raheem at the time. We both met, Bilal and I, we met at Morgan State University. So, okay. of course, it's like musicians, Corner <laughs> yeah. and Singer's Corner with Dr. Nathan Carter. You know, he really trained some great singers. So, uh, Bilal introduced me into Raheem Devon, and, um, and that's then you did how that started. Group, mm -hmm. what, what was that group? Uh, Marcel and the Truth. Yes. Oh. Yes. Very and good. I met them at Morgan State University <laughs> as well. So, Bilal and I were both singing with Marcel and the Truth and Raheem Devon at the same time. You were yeah. doing double dipping. Oh, huh? yeah, yeah. While I was in school. Wow. While I was wow. in school, I was carrying like 18 credits, sometimes 21. Man. Credits, Whoa. but um, you know, I, I love music, yeah. and I was just, you know, I was really trying to make some things happen at the time. Now, what were you studying in, in college? Information science and systems. Okay, information like science. IT. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. But music was sort of under. The yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I wanted to major in music, yeah. you know, but like my mentors, oh man, you know, I made no money in music. You know, yeah. it's always that. <laughs> I call it the uh, practicality versus passion. <laughs> uh, you know, um, yeah. you do what's practical, Manny. You Did know. you pursue any of the IT? Oh, uh, uh, yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I went on to grad school, went to Carnegie Mellon. Is that Then got right? my master's in inf information security. Whoa. So, so uh, do you still dabble? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, st I'm still in cybersecurity, still in the field. You now, know. switching back to music, mm -hmm. uh, the Temptations mm -hmm. come somewhere in that whole history. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us how you got involved in that. Well, it was a call out for uh, an audition in Baltimore City. And a buddy of mine, he said, man, I need you to come down. There's some Temptation guys. They're looking for, uh, you know, some guys to sing some first tenor. <laughs> And I said, the Temptations, like really, <laughs> like <laughs> greatest group of yeah, all time. Yeah, what are you, you know, talking about? So, look, lo and behold, I'm glad I went down there. So I went down there, and the guy said, you know, this is the Damon Harris Temptations review. That's what it turned out to be. Mm. And um, Damon Harris had died, of, I believe, around 2012, 2013, from okay. prostate cancer, mm. and he had his own group that was traveling. Um, temptations review, and they needed a replacement, and um, I was selected as the replacement. Which temptation were you, Emmanuel Withers? I was <laughs> Eddie Kendricks. Oh, <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. And I was blown away, just the history, uh, especially with Damon Harris being from Baltimore. Yes. And the fact that he replaced uh, Eddie Kendricks and, you know, in the group, he was his first replacement. So that's Damon Harris singing on Papa Was a Rolling Stone, which at the time I didn't really know because he was so close. Mm. and sound, right. mm -hmm. you know, and his phrasing, and um, he, he had Eddie down to the point where Eddie gave him the nod, like, yeah, he's the guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> give yeah. us a little bit. How, what was that part, the, the Eddie Kendricks part in Rolling Stone? Come on, give us a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> give us a little bit. What is it? Papa was a Rolling Stone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he died. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So you you said you uh, you followed the careers of some of the legendary singers and so yeah. when did that start? Did you were you sitting at home listening to some of your parents' records or uh, something? Yes, it started out when I was around twelve. I okay. started my own studio. I had my own. You know, I come had like on, a, come come on. yeah, yeah, twelve years old. I used to do Christian rap. What? Gospel rap. Yep. Yeah. And that's how I started out writing songs. So I had my own little. I had two two turntables and. I had an eight second sampler, a drum machine I did not know how to program. So I, I actually literally for three minutes, I would do my own beats. <laughs> but I made the records and, and that was like my start, you know, uh, with music. Yeah. yeah. And so it started out at that much at an early age. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is nice. Uh, where, where does Neo Classic fit in with the music landscape today? It's um, while I was making those songs, I, I fell in love with the records that, that I was sampling. So I was, I was sampling Stevie Wonder, mm. um, the SOS band, uh, you know, and a lot of these artists and, and Sarah Vaughan. I was in, what was happening while I was sampling the records, I found myself just listening to the records. I would sit there and listen <laughs> because my mother, she's a musician uh, and she's a, a classically trained singer and a pianist. So. I always thought she was the singer. I never thought of myself as a singer. I didn't get to, I didn't start singing until I was 16 years old. Wow. So um, 
when I fell in love with those songs and I just started listening more and more and more, I said, wow, you know, this is pretty nice. So at one point I, I was giving a girl a chorus of mine to sing. We were writing a song. She said, well, Manny, why don't you just sing the chorus yourself? She said, what do you mean? She said, because you sound good singing it. Wow. Sure does. And that's how, um, that's how I got into singing. So quickly, mm -hmm. what's next for you? I um, Now I'm, I'm releasing my, uh, my project. It's called The Neo Classic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be out in September, you know, and pretty much the theme around Neo Classic is just my love of old music, um, wow. of, of Marvin Gaye and, and um, The Temptations, uh, Night King Cole, Sam Cooke. And now what I'm doing, I'm just taking that sound and just wanted to modernize it yeah. to today's wow. sound. And we're going to hear some now. When we come back, Emmanuel Withers takes the stage to turn up his signature sound. So stay right where you are. The 202 will be right back after this. <laughs> It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. And welcome back to the 202. Emmanuel Withers, Pretty Girl. Now that song surely must have had Michelle in mind. Oh, <laughs> lay some Neo Classic on this stage, Emmanuel. Take it away. Sorrow of our pastime 
Cindy Tran and Emmanuel Withers. Yes, <laughs> yes. And thanks to DJ Ducky Dynamo. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again on another episode of the 202. Thank you. So don't get no tighter yeah. Herman and Michelle can't get, get no writer Taxation, no representation nah. But the 202 repping for the capital nation <laughs> So from 703 to the 301 yeah. yeah, we all come to have some fun It's the 202 It's the 202 It's the 202 It's the 202 This is how we do When we party in the 202 yeah. It's the 202 yeah. This the 202 this the 202. It's the 202. Yeah. This the 202. This the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party it's in the, the 202. It's the, it's the 202. Uh. 202. 202. 202.